Okay, how are you doing, Rachel? Um, it is time for me to answer your questions for you. Uh, once again, this is Parrish Tanner with Ocala Car Audio, and I am coming here to answer some questions for my friend Rachel. She's in one of her business classes and had to pose some questions to some different business professionals. So I don't know what she was thinking calling me out on this, but I'll give it a try. So she's got a number of questions. First, she wants to know, what precisely do you do? What are the duties, functions, responsibilities of your job? What are the most important personal satisfactions and dissatisfactions connected with your occupation? What part of this job do you personally find most satisfying, most challenging? What do you like and not like about working in this industry? And does your work relate to any experiences or studies you had in college or trade school? What particular skills or talents are most essential to be effective in your job? Do you have any advice for someone interested in this field or job? What are, excuse me, are there any written materials you suggest that I read? And what professional journals, organizations would help her learn more about this field? And finally, where do you see yourself in five years? So those are the questions I'm going to attempt to answer in this little broadcast for you. So what precisely do you do? Well, on the big picture, we are a car audio retailer that does car audio, driver safety devices, convenience devices, things to allow you to enjoy your car more. And we do a large amount of window tint and paint protection film. That is the broad scope of what our industry looks like. And for me, I am the chief visionary officer, um, guiding principal, guiding light, so to speak. And that's a transition for me because I've tried to... Uh, I, I've held so many roles in the company of doing everything, but now I am trying to focus on where I am trying to head to. But the jobs and duties and functions, responsibilities. So on the big picture, I am the lead salesman here, uh, do all the sales training. I have to uh, set the principles, processes, and procedures, and how we do our needs analysis and sales with our staff. So I also have to do all the recruiting and hiring of our staff, that is both our sales staff, our production staff, and our administrative staff. Administrative here is HR, AP, and um, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and HR, and logistics, which is inventory control. That's all inventory coming in, coming out. At one point in the company, those three, or the logistics, AR, AP, and HR was all my primary responsibility. But over the last few years, I've been able to shed that and give that to other people that are much better suited for that. So then we're also looking at the logistics. That's all incoming and outbound product, how it comes in, goes out. Um, and over the last two years, I finally turned that over to uh, Rachel, your mom. Uh, so Miss Robin handles that. So I used to be responsible for installations in the company in the early days, and I have turned that over over the last number of years to additional staff that I've been able to recruit, train, and retain. And then same with our sales. So sales has always been my main focus through the company, and it is still one of my key responsibilities to help with overflow and training on that. So part of that is... Um, over the last few years, being able to identify the different roles that the company has, putting a name to them and applying it to them. And then window film, I am also responsible for the direction of the window film department. While I do not do installations, I do try to make sure they have everything that they need, the trainings and direction for that. We also do, I also am responsible for all of our marketing. That is both network marketing, that's face-to-face -face marketing, as well as internet marketing through the websites, Google My Business, and Google AdWords, analytics, and different forms of advertising, different print advertisings that we do as well. So I will uh, see all of that. I'm responsible for uh, different off-site events on a regular basis, whether it be bike nights, car shows, or what have you. Um, setting up booths, designing what we're doing, and just making that happen. I'm responsible for all of our community outreach, which the company mission is to build better men and build a better community. So community outreach is finding different local charities and organizations that we feel fit the core values of who Ocala Car Audio is and fit our mission and following through with that to help support those in any way that we can. Currently we're working on putting together a car, truck, and 
Motorcycle Festival for support of the Boys and Girls Club, where that will be happening on May 16th, where so far we're just over $30,000 raised for them. Uh, we also have done some other things that I can get into deeper with you at a later time if you would like. What is most in my, the, What are the most important personal satisfactions and dissatisfactions connected with my occupation? So the occupation is interesting. You know, I think the personal satisfactions for me is whenever I have a client that comes in and I can sit there and take them from concept to completion of being able to do a needs analysis, find out what exactly they have on my, on their mind, what they want to accomplish, being able to de develop a system for them, um, put the parts pieces necessary and uh, direct the execution of that installation and then delivering that vehicle to them. You know, for me, there's nothing like the power of music. And to be able to give somebody some, some the power of music in their car that um, touches them in that way um, is just huge for me. Um, I love that. When you see that smile, that relief that comes through, that's one of the bi biggest satisfactions of this industry um, that I've always loved, um, that personal power of connection to music. Um, now dissatisfactions connected with my occupation. Um, I think basis is a lot of education issues um, as well as inferior products and inferior execution of things. So clients who are not an educated properly on what real products are and they're not willing to listen to it or they're miseducated by different people, um, different internet things lying to customers and providing misinformation really bothers uh, me quite a bit because it really makes our job of education um, a big difference. Um, and I think this is just a follow-up of that of uh, what is part of the job I find most satisfying. I think of the occupation is that. Now of my job specifically, um, I think the fact that I get to help people on a regular basis you know, build better men, build a better community is something that we firmly believe in here at Ocal Car Audio. So that's between staffing, um, training our staff, providing the best staff possible, encouraging them to get involved in the community, us being involved in the community, um, and teaching and bringing um, what I've learned, what we've each learned through the years, and being able to pass that on to someone else is huge. Being able to affect the lives of others in a positive fashion is huge most challenging in my job is actually is again education is um, you know identifying people who are educatable um, that I can connect with and then sometimes we run across people that I, um, I can't connect with properly um, and you know that are possibly uneducatable for us um, or they just think that we're here to just sell them and rip them off uh, that are not open to that education is difficult you know we really set ourselves apart by helping provide education to our consumers so that they really can um, make an educated decision. Um, and that's important for me. Another part of this question is, what do you like and not like about working in this industry? Some of the same things. You know, I love the fact that we get to play with cool toys. We get to have fun. You know, it's hard to argue with, man. You guys get to work on these cool cars, these cool trucks, these cool bikes, and play with all the, these toys. I mean, man, I love that. Absolutely love it. But again, I, the industry side of it that I hate is how easy it is for people to get in and screw things up from really bad products um, that don't do as advertised. And I really hate um, when we have to go in behind and fix um, installations for people that paid other shops good money to screw their car up. Um, and that happens way more than uh, I'd like to admit, you know, or I'd like to see. Um, it really devalues the consumer confidence in our industry, and that's something that I really do hate about that. Um, now, another part of this is, does your work relate to any experiences or studies that I had in trade school? Well, those that know me know that's an absolute yes, without a doubt. Um, in high school, I took the communications and media classes at uh, the Capillary Vocational Center up in Springfield, Illinois. That was photography, cinematography, television, production and radio production so obviously with social media and the marketing that I do for the company at this point it is hard to argue that that photography has not come to play uh, quite a bit 
um, and our television production, even this little uh, broadcast I'm doing for you, Rachel, is based upon some of what we learned 30 plus years ago in our Mr. Grimes uh, television classes. So that's been a big part of what we do. So, yes, absolutely. Um, studies also, math has been huge in what we do. So what particular skills or talents are most essential to be effective in my job uh, currently is uh, math is huge in sales and marketing. Math is um, and understanding numbers is is critical. Um, people skills, interpersonal skills is critical into what we do to be able to get people to do things that um, you need done, whether it be as a salesman, being able to influence a client to walk them through and influence them properly, to be able to build a staff and to be able to influence them properly. Um, to me, that's what leadership is. Leadership skills is nothing more than leadership is uh, influence. How have I been able to exert influence on others? Um, just because it says owner on, the, on it or whatever doesn't mean that uh, anybody needs to do anything that I do or that I want them to do. But that influence, how do we exert a positive influence on people? Um, that's one of the most essential things that we have. Do you have any advice for someone interested in this field or job? Absolutely. It's fun. You can have a great time with it. But find some aspects of it that you really enjoy and focus on that. Do what you can do there. Find something within this industry that you can do that really draws out your happiness and who you are. So if you find happiness in critical thinking and analytics, possibly that critical thinking could be a problem solver for um, someone in the industry through a technician. Um, if you are more of a numbers cruncher, there's different aspects of what we do. Um, if you're, that's in our main field, if you're looking at this job, leadership skills are critical. Um, learning how to influence others. Um, are there any written materials that I would suggest that you read? There's a number of books. Um, how to Fr Win Friends and Influence People is a by Dale Carnegie is a very very old book. That's a great one to go through. Um, uh, it's a little bit more of a read, um, written in older language, so it's a little more fun to comprehend. A really simple and easy one that has been great that I recommend to a lot of people is Darren Hardy's The Compound Effect. He was or is the editor for Success Magazine. That's a very quick, easy, light read, but it, it it's uh, is a very powerful one. The E-Myth by Michael Gerber has been one of my favorites that I recommend to every business professional that I can ever think of. That's um, a great book. I love it to death. And then uh, the great book, uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins, um, is cr very, very important. Uh, you know, and some of those books are talking about a lot of the key fundamentals of business that uh, really matter a lot. And another one that a lot of people uh, may not know is uh, Buried Treasure. It's written by Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Um, it talks about the buried treasure within the in language and understanding what things really mean. And uh, for dealing with the interpersonal skills with other people, that's been a great book for me as well. Um, which professional journals and organizations would help learn more in this field? Um, on Facebook, the, Mo the uh, Mobile Electronic Syndicate uh, is a Facebook group that's done well that and there's a bunch of different Facebook groups that are in that we use as well but the MEA the Mobile Electronics Association uh, Chris Cook heads that up uh, that is one that can truly help you out there's also um, the Installer Institute over in Holly Hill that is headed up by Metro that's actually an organization that helps train next generation of installers um, in our industry and the final question we have is, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, in five years, I see myself working more and more on the business and being more of a chief visionary, um, guiding light and coaching and teaching, um, less in the sales roles, but just being more of uh, in a position that I've, that I've empowered other people to take their roles and own it and move forward. Let them focus on what they're good at, me focusing on spending time with the family, um, spending time with being able to, you know, maybe in five years, maybe having a grandkid or two, I don't know, 
but um, more in, in the business wise, I think that I'm going to be more. I'm, I'm hoping to be more in a, a guiding role and less of a day to day operational role. But so, so I hope that I've helped you out on some of those, Rachel, and anyone else that may see this. Um, I'd love to answer any other questions. So if you've got any, please let me know, and uh, I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon.